Hello and welcome everybody from across the world joining us live on Facebook for our show Pulse by Health Job Hub. My name is Prashanti Naidu, founder of healthjobhub.com. I started Pulse to connect, share and inspire. My mission is to unveil the pulse behind the pulse. Today I have a very special guest joining us live on Pulse. It is my honor and privilege to welcome Dr. Rashelia Naidu joining us all the way from Cambridge, UK. Greetings and good wishes, Dr. Naidu. Thank you for joining us. How are you today? Hi, I'm fine. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Prashanti. It's a privilege to be invited on your show this afternoon. Oh, I am so delighted to have you and thank you for making the time. How is Cambridge today? Oh, it's wonderful today. We finally had a day of good weather. Oh, I'm delighted to hear that. And it's going into summer, I believe. Yes, it is. Oh, it's lovely here. How is oh. Calgary? Calgary is beautiful, absolutely beautiful. We're also going into summer, so we've got lovely, beautiful blue skies this morning. Um, so it's it's going really well. I'm, I'm excited to be seeing some sunshine and warmer days. Exactly. <laughs> To all our viewers, Pulse by Health Job Hub is a live talk show. So if you have any questions or comments, please post them on the live chat and we will answer you. If you enjoy our show, please smash the like button, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and please share with your network. I'd like to thank our sponsor, healthjobhub.com, for sponsoring this show. In response to COVID-19, healthjobhub.com has opened up our platform to all employers during this time of need to post unlimited jobs. I am now just going to show um, a graduation show photo of Dr. Naidu and read through her bio. Dr. Shalia Naidu, a general dentist from Cambridge in the United Kingdom, Having completed her dental degree at Universidad Cardinal Herrera in Spain, Rochelia is truly a global citizen. Having been born in South Africa, immigrated to Dublin, Ireland at the age of three, completed her school studies in Ireland, and went on to study and complete her dental degree in Valencia, Spain, and now is working and living in the UK. Rochelia's keen interest in dentistry and understanding dental health care globally whilst meeting people of different cultures and languages had led her to study in Spain. It was an inspiring and educational experience as she learned how different cultures understood and dealt with oral and varying dental treatment methodologies used. Rochelia's avid interest in people and helping them overcome their dental challenges had led her to start a YouTube channel and Instagram account where she has a series of videos helping people with dental issues and concerns during COVID-19. So please get in touch and send her a message as she is more than happy to help. Rochelia has a keen interest in smile redesign and is hoping to do her master's in restorative dentistry in the near future. Wow, this is an incredible bio, Dr. Naidu. You're so young and so accomplished. Congratulations. Oh, thank you so much. Please share your story about what inspired you to pursue a career in dentistry and become a dentist. And please share with us your journey from Ireland to Spain and to UK. Thank you, Prashanti. I would love to tell you that I've always wanted to be a dentist, but that would not entirely be true. I chose dentistry as a career for a number of reasons. I knew that I wanted to help people in a way that makes them feel good about themselves whilst providing a solution to their problems. Dentistry allows me an opportunity to make a difference in my patient's health and well-being. I also consider the fact that it gives me a chance to be my own boss and own my own dental practice. There are also continuous improvements in the type of treatment and care provided. For example, the first wave of dentistry were tooth extractions. In fact, I recall my granny telling me a story of how she had to wait at the local clinic 
when she was a young girl waiting to get a tooth removed. The dentist would come out to the waiting room and inject a number of patients with anesthesia and then begin the process of extracting the patient's troubled tooth. Unfortunately, if you were at the end of the row, you had a problem as the anesthesia would have almost worn off. The second wave of dentistry, known as the drill and fill, this was an improvement to the first, and this sort of happened when my parents were younger. We are currently on and working toward the third stage, which is prevention and preservation of teeth. We focus on educating the patient and on their specific dental needs and oral hygiene practices, as studies have shown that if you educate patients, they become more motivated and informed on in how to help themselves. I'm also quite a social person and I do enjoy meeting new people. I know that this may not appear to be a very social profession, as a dentist is constantly looking in your mouth whilst chatting to you. In fact, it may be a very one-sided relationship, but believe it or not, we do understand our patients when they talk to us. You tend to build up a rapport with your patient, and it's a beautiful thing when a patient trusts you and puts their belief in you. For most people visiting the dentist, it's a bit of a love-hate relationship. They hate to come home, but love when the work is done. Yes. My intentions were to start a master's degree in restorative dentistry, but the current climate has forced me to defer my studies. And I believe sincerely that dentistry enhances people's lives and makes them feel better about themselves. Thank you. <laughs> oh, that is amazing. I, I love the passion you share about dentistry. And I love the fact that um, you call it, it could be a one-sided relationship, but it's so much more than that. Uh, thank you so much for sharing that. Please tell us a little bit more about your exciting new endeavors on social media. Um, especially during this period of COVID-19, I wanted to make a difference in any way that I could. Currently in the UK, and as far as I'm aware in a number of other countries, dental services are not that are not routine and non-urgent have been stopped. Yes. As a result, a number of dental practices have, been, have closed their doors or have dramatically reduced their staff and working hours. I felt as though I needed to participate in some way and to make mm -hmm. a contribution during this time. So a number of my friends and family have been asking me about their personal dental care. And I thought about the many people who would require some support during this time and may not have direct access to this kind of support. Mm -hmm. So I started an online series of videos of tips on oral care, addressing general queries that people may have as well as, uh, as, well as debunking some dental myths along the way. For example, mm -hmm. like looking after baby's teeth isn't important. Complete myth. <laughs> So parents basically feel that because baby teeth will be replaced by permanent teeth, it's not important to brush them and care for them. Mm -hmm. Nothing will be further from the truth. Like, so tooth decay is a disease that affects both baby and permanent teeth. The decay mm -hmm. of baby teeth can result in pain and infection, which could psychologically affect the child. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And then secondly, the uh, root canal treatment is extremely painful. No, no. So the root canal treatment procedure itself is painless. It's the tooth infection that is actually very painful and people just associate this pain with the treatment. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, I actually uh, know what you mean because I had to do a root canal when I was in Dublin actually. And I was so nervous because I was expecting my first child at that time. And so I went into the dentist and I was really nervous, but I was so surprised that it was so painless. So I was, you know, from my, uh, what I thought was going to be the process and what actually was the process, it's amazing. No, exactly. And also like technology is advanced and it's not like it used to be when my granny was young or my parents. Absolutely. No, that's wonderful. And, and so you are doing a series of YouTube uh, videos and you're doing a series of Instagram videos now to educate people on all the different dental challenges they uh, encounter. Yes, exactly. And so they're just like tips, but it's always imperative to see a dentist. So yes. search for my name on YouTube and Instagram and give it a follow and come along with this on this journey with me. Oh, that is amazing. I'm, I'm getting a couple of um, chat messages from a viewer saying that there seems to be a sound issue. So I'm not 100% sure if our viewers can uh, hear us well, but I can certainly hear you extremely well. I will say to our viewers who's tuning in, and if you cannot hear us, after the show, we will be publishing our YouTube video as well as we will be sharing this on Facebook. Uh, so if there's any technical issues and you cannot hear us, you will have an opportunity to still join the show and ask questions in the comments and we will get back to you, even if it is after the live show. 
So thank you so much for those uh, chat messages. In creating Pulse, our, one of our goals is to have our finger on the pulse. How has your community and practice been impacted by COVID-19? And please share your experience working during the pandemic. As I said earlier, we in the UK are triaging patients over the phone. So this is the first step towards getting any dental advice. I cannot see this changing over the next few weeks. Following recent guidelines from NHS England and the Department of Health, dental practices have been advised to stop all routine and aerosol generating procedures where possible. As well as reducing the risks to staff and patients, this also prevents unnecessary travel in an attempt to reduce virus transmission. So the trialing aims to advise people in pain who need access to care and also support people in managing minor symptoms at home. Um, these patients are broken down into four main categories, which are routine care, non-urgent care, urgent care, and dental emergencies. So depending on the symptoms you have, you would fall into one of the four categories, which will determine the course of treatment. Um, That's amazing. And tell me, uh, what would your dental advice be? And what dental tips would you have for all of us who are staying home and trying to stay safe during COVID-19 and are unable to go and visit the dentist due to the lockdown? First and foremost, it is essential to maintain good oral hygiene. This coupled with the low sugar diet will help you prevent any decay from occurring or existing decay from getting worse. So brush your teeth twice daily for two minutes with a good fluoride toothpaste. So that's 30 seconds for each quadrant of the mouth. That includes brushing the outer surfaces closest to your cheek, the inner surfaces closest to your tongue, and the chewing surfaces. And don't forget to brush your tongue. I know it seems like a long time, but less than two minutes, you may be missing some surfaces. Make sure you floss or choose into dental brushes every day to remove debris and plaque lodged between your teeth. You can also add a tongue scraper into your daily routine. Tongue scrapers have been proven to be more effective at reducing the biofilm at the back of the tongue compared to simple toothbrush bristles. It is very important to clean the back of your tongue as far as possible because the posterior portion of the tongue is loaded with the most coating. Just doing these simple things will help prevent any gum disease or decay from occurring, which will help you not need the dentist <laughs> during COVID. Thank you. No, that's amazing. We have a viewer question. I'm just going to show it onto our screen. Um, it is from Favena Iyer. I've been waking up with jaw pain. Do I need to see a dentist? So teeth grinding and jaw like uh, clenching, also called bruxism, is often related to stress and anxiety. This is regarding your temporomandibular joint. So you will need to see a dentist before this can lead to a more serious issue. And they, ev they may even refer you to a specialist. So in an idyllic world without COVID-19, a biplate or splint would be made by your dentist. But another option would be to buy a general mouth guard from a pharmacy, which can be placed in hot water and molded to your teeth. It reduces the sensation of bruxing your teeth in layman's term grinding. And they also help reduce the pain and prevent tooth wear as well as protect against further damage. That's amazing, thank you. So you, the jaw pain you say it could be due to bruxing? The grinding? Uh, bru of the teeth? Yes, it's, yeah, it's called bruxing and layman's term is grinding of your teeth. And that yeah. affects uh, temporomandibular joint. Right. Wow. No, thank you for sharing that. We have another question from Anusha Naidu. Recently, my teeth, teeth have been sensitive when eating. Can you give me some advice, please? Um, yes, definitely. Um, so, sensitivity. Dentine hypersensitivity has features which are also similar to other conditions like cavities, fractured or chipped enamel, tooth worn enamel, exposed tooth roots, and like gum disease. Uh, sensitive teeth can be treated, which is good. The type of treatment will depend on what is causing the sensitivity though. So the tooth structure is composed of three layers. Enamel, which is the outer layer, dentine underlies that, and then the pulp chamber. So dentine is a lot more porous than enamel and contains tubules where the nerve endings lie. If the enamel is worn down, and this happens over a long period of time, the dentine is, is exposed and exposes the nerve endings. So hypersensitivity occurs from a loss of protective covering, which is the enamel. And this is caused by like abrasion, attrition, erosion, and abfraction. And then you could also have cervical sensitivity, 
which is basically the gum around the tooth recedes, exposing the cementum. This is caused by brushing too hard or even like a lack of brushing, causing mm -hmm. plaque recession and recession of the gingiva. So try to avoid strongly acidic foods and drinks and wait at least an hour before eat an hour after eating, my bad, before brushing, as this cause this could cause even more sensitivity. Um, grinding your teeth can also increase sensitivity and a mouth guard might be necessary. So also you can rub a little toothpaste on the sensitive area when going to bed as it helps protect the surface. Sensodyne would be ideal as it blocks the dentine tubules and stops the transmission of, sens of the sensation from the tooth surface to the nerve. There are also a couple of measures to prevent, to help prevent against tooth sensitivity. Um, number one, you could use a soft toothbrush. You can mm -hmm. stop your intake of acidic fruits such as like oranges and tomatoes. Drink juice with a straw as it bypasses your teeth. And to clean your teeth an hour after eating so it neutralizes the pH. Thank you, thank you. That is amazing and awesome advice and I'll definitely try to implement some of those myself. We have another viewer question. Uh, from Kaven Pukuri, can you ever brush your teeth too hard? You can. So there are a couple of ways to tell if you're brushing your teeth too hard. Firstly, if you find damage to your toothbrush, meaning if you've noticed some spray, uh, splayed bristles or the bristles that fan out. And receding mm -hmm. gums is another. If you brush too hard, you can damage the gum tissue and make it begin to recede, exposing more of your tooth. Another sign is if, if, if you're brushing too hard, if you're using too, uh, sorry, too much tooth sensitivity, your teeth are protected with enamel. And then when you overbrush them, you wear down the enamel faster than normal. Mm -hmm. And then the enamel, you have dentine, as I've mentioned previous, which is a lot more sensitive. So I recommend the best method uh, to brush your teeth is called the modified bath technique. This involves holding the brush at a 45 degree angle towards your gum line and then moving the brush back and forth using short strokes. You can also make tiny circles with the brush on all your teeth. This allows the bristles to gently slide under the gum and remove the plaque. Remember to brush the chewing surfaces back and forth. And from the inside of your mouth, if you hold the brush vertically and use the same gentle back and forth or circular brushing action. Also, you should purchase a soft bristle brush. That would be key. Awesome. So you are suggesting that the medium to hard brushes are not necessarily the best yeah. to use? Don't advise them at no. all. Yeah, for if you're brushing too hard or dentine yeah. hypersensitivity. Oh, that's amazing. No, thank you. These are great tips and I really appreciate you sharing them. And uh, what crossed my mind, uh, especially now during COVID-19 and the lockdown, what happens if somebody has a filling and the filling actually pops out? Uh, what happens uh, in that case and they cannot get to a dentist? Is there any remedies, home remedies or tips you can give us? I can only advise what the treatment would be here in England and they may differ in your own country. But here, um, if the tooth is sensitive to hot and cold, an emergency tooth repair kit is advised, which can be purchased online or at a pharmacy. This repair kit has a material called zinc oxide eugenol, which is an intermediate restorative material we use in the clinics. And this should help for the time being until you can see your dentist, as well as taking the recommended painkillers. And mm -hmm. we also advise patients to call back if, if the symptoms have not relieved by these painkillers. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. 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 And uh, secondly, if if you know if you don't have any sensitivity, but have noticed like an ulcer in your tongue or cheek due to the sharp edges left by the broken filling, mm -hmm. I recommend you take a sterile emery board and carefully and gently file down the sharp edges. The ulcer will subside within like seven to ten days, and also you should rinse your mouth with warm salt water to prevent infection. Awesome. And you know, salt water is, is been a tried and tested remedy, remedy for years for so many different things. So I'm delighted to hear you say that also for the, the ulcer. Uh, something so simple can be so effective. Thank you, um, Dr. Uh, Rishalia. I have another viewer uh, question from Yenka Naidu. What is the best way to whiten your teeth? Well, that's a tough question because there's no universal answer that applies for everyone. The fastest and most effective way to whiten teeth is typically an in-office professional whitening procedure. 
However, there are many other treatments and solutions depending on your case. So luckily, tooth staining is, reversible, is a reversible procedure. There are three different types of staining. So there's age-related staining, surface stainings, and under the surface stainings. Surface stainings, which are called intrinsic, uh, surface stainings, which are called extrinsic stainings, are, include different foods and drinks, smoking, and poor oral hygiene. Under the surface strainings, stains, which are intrinsic stains, are mainly due to medications, trauma, T decay, genetic predispositions, fluorosis, and trauma to the primary tooth. So to, to prevent extrinsic stainings, you must avoid foods and beverages that stain your teeth. So smoking and practicing good oral hygiene, which includes brushing twice daily, flossing daily, and rinsing with a good mouthwash. Um, fluorosis is a condition on the surface of your tooth with, uh, with developmental defects, and this can occur in a highly fluoridated area of the country. Um, so fluorosis can be treated with resin infiltration and microabrasion. And it's basically caused by the overexposure to fluoride during the first eight years of your life when your permanent teeth are forming. Yeah, so with fluorosis, you can also treat it with uh, composite porcelain or lithium desilicate veneers, but these are purely for aesthetic reasons. Mm -hmm. Lastly, please, if you're thinking of whitening your teeth, please don't use charcoal and any products with charcoal in them. It really doesn't work and it's very abrasive. Mm -hmm. and it's really just an illusion. With the charcoal in your mouth, you'll tend to brush even harder and for longer because you want to get rid of the black. And then ultimately, you're brushing away your enamel, which isn't good for you. And it can also stain existing fillings, which are white. Because I've seen so many products on the market now that contain charcoal. And it's a mystery why they're out there because they're really not good for you. That is incredible. I'm, I'm uh, so surprised to hear that. And how are they actually allowed to be on the shelves and being sold and the marketing behind it? So what you're saying is that we have to actually be careful of what we buy and what we treat ourselves. So it should always be a doctor recommended product um, is what you would suggest. We have another viewer question. It's from Kershni Naidu. Once the enamel is worn out, can it be whitened again? Oh, that's a very interesting question. Um, it depends if your tooth is like sensitive or not. And you can, you can do like non-vital bleaching. So if you have like a root canal treatment, you can like penetrate through the dental tubules and then you can, uh, your teeth will be a lot whiter. But I need to actually do some more research on this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we will get back to you, Kashni. Thank you for the question. And YouTube video. I have a whole segment on teeth whitening. That, that would be amazing. No, thank you for that. We have another question from uh, Taven. What about using an electric toothbrush? Well, I think it kind of depends on the person. For me personally, I prefer an electric toothbrush because I find that the head of it's quite small. So it goes in between places in your teeth and you can reach at the bottom of your lower teeth quite easily. And But some prefer the actual physical motion of brushing your teeth, which might help for them. So it's really each their own. Yes. Is one better than the other? Um, I think electric toothbrushes are quite good because you can re it, you don't see very many patients with gum, recess with gum recession. Which is, yeah, okay, yeah. Hard. Absolutely. Another question from Kirshni is Can saliva cause tartar? It's not really saliva, it's more like the plaque and bacteria build up in your mouth, which causes mm -hmm. the plaque. And then once the plaque hardens, it causes calculus, which you can't remove. You have to actually go to a dentist or a hygienist to remove it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but over salivation, cat, like, is one of the causes, I guess. I see, no, thank you. We do have another uh, question and I am not familiar with this language. I'm not sure, Evershalia, if you are? Unfortunately, no. Okay, well, we will try and research that and do a translation and we will try and answer the question on the chat. So thank you so much for asking the question. 
This has been amazing. I love all the viewer questions and I love all the interactions. So thank you to all our viewers for participating. Uh, Dr. Rashid and I do, do you want to share a few last words before we um, close the show? Yeah, um, I hope that I've managed to like debunk and address some of the myths and questions you may have. So dentistry is an ever evolving discipline and we do realize that a large number of the public are very fearful of dentists. So visiting your dentist regularly will ensure that you minimize dental disease and infection. And I hope that I've shown that dentist that a dentist practice isn't as scary place as it's made out to be. Oh, thank you so much. You know, I see a few more viewer questions coming through. Do you mind taking a couple of more questions? No, that's fine. We have another one from Lalitha Naidu. During this COVID-19 lockdown period, what is the best way to attend to a filling that has fallen off from one's molar or premolar? Oh, I've addressed this previously. Yes, yes, yes. yes. But in England, we have an emergency repair kit. But I'm not sure if that's the same in what country that this yes. view is from. Right. But based, yeah. Right. No, well, thank you so much for that. So I think that's probably a question that they would need to call in and consult with their dentist, I'm sure. No, exactly. Awesome. Awesome. We have another one from Yanka. Is it necessary to floss daily? Short answer, yes. <laughs> so, a toothbrush touches the outer surfaces of your teeth, closest to your cheek. The inner surfaces, which are near to the side of your tongue, and the chewing surfaces, but never goes in between your teeth. A wise dentist told me this. Uh, flossing helps to prevent gum disease by getting rid of the pieces of food and plaque from between your teeth. So when you first start flossing, your gums may be a little tender and bleed a little, but carry on flossing your teeth and the bleeding should subside as your gums become healthier. So if you find flossing difficult, you can use interdental brushes, floss picks or water picks as an alternative. Mm -hmm. um, and for those of you who aren't familiar with interdental brushes, they have a small bristled head designed to clean in between your teeth and they come in a variety of widths to suit the sizes of gaps. So you can buy them from a pharmacy or supermarkets. And if you're still getting bleeding after a few days, get advice from your dentist. They can check if you're using the brushes correctly. Awesome, awesome. No, thank you so much. These have been wonderful tips and I hope our viewers have all found this informative. We've got some uh, really lovely comments saying it has been most informative and fantastic tips. So thank you so much, Dr. Naidu, for joining us this uh, morning in Calgary and afternoon in Cambridge and sharing your incredible story on Pulse by Health Job Hub. This brings us to a close of our Facebook Live show for Pulse by Health Job Hub. I do hope that you enjoyed the show as much as I did. Please join me next week, same time on Facebook Live. I am excited to announce that our special guest joining us next week is Catherine Kominsky, Professor in Healthcare Statistics and former head of the School of Nursing and Midwifery in Trinity College, Dublin University joining us all the way from Dublin, Ireland, who will be sharing with our viewers some of the amazing research work that she is currently working on in relation to the global pandemic COVID-19. Please join us again next week to be inspired. And don't forget, if you enjoy the show, please smash the like button, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and please share with the network. Thank you, stay safe, and good night, everybody. Bye, thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure.